everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got another Father's Day inspired project, however this can be made for anybody. I think it would work great as a favour as well at parties and it is a chocolate bar style gift box. The inspiration for this actually came from a card that I saw on Pinterest. Somebody had done a card very similar to this, they'd just done a brown card blank and then they just die cut squares and made it into a look like a chocolate bar and I thought that would be really nice to actually make as a gift box. So what I've done here is this one's actually for my dad, he's called Terry so I have personalised it because on a lot of chocolate, for example this one here which is slowly being eaten, you can see the embossed Cadbury's writing there on the front of the chocolate and obviously you can see how those squares look. Of course I had to look and eat the chocolate for you know the purposes of this video, it just had to be done. So <laughs> here is my version just blow off that chocolate there, I don't want anything melting and I have finished it off with a lovely little bow and I've used the Fine Young Classic Gentleman 100% quality, I used this on the wash bag tutorial that I've done as well and I will share the whole Father's Day playlist up here as well so you can see that if you've missed anything. Also I used one of those little sprigs, I thought I'd bring that in, I shared these last week, it was part of my what did I get video and then at the bottom is here, what I'm going to do, I don't really want to undo it all so I'm going to try and see if I can wiggle this off there we go, very carefully, I can just loop that back on in a minute, but my dad loves Reese's Cups, or is it, are they called Reese's Cups? I think they are, and in here I have managed to fit quite a few Reese's Cups. So it's made for these in terms of the height and the width, because you can get, I think it was three, yeah, three in a line. So there's quite a few in there, I brought a bag of the Reese's Cups and I filled pretty much this whole box with the bag of them. But you can, I think, get a like a smaller bar, you know, of dairy milk or something in here as well. You might even be able to get two levels of like the lint chocolate, because I know their chocolate bars are quite thin. Um, so I'm pretty sure you can fit more actual slabs of chocolate in these. But of course you can pop anything in there that you want. But yeah, I have made this as a personalised gift for my dad with his favourite chocolate in. And then it just has the little piece there that slides in and then I should be able to very carefully slide that back on because I don't want to do all that again because I've already obviously tied my bows and my knot and everything but I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Like I said, it looked great for party favours. You can customise it for, for anybody and do it in any colours you want as well. So I'm gonna show you how to make it. Okay, so it's actually very, very easy and you know, very few supplies are needed. Now I have used for speed, this is my one inch punch. And with the waste from the card size that I give you in a moment, you do have this and it's enough to be able to cut the squares out for the chocolate. So this little punch, I mean, I always say, if you, if you buy some kind of like the basic punches, so a couple of like a one by one inch, two by two, they're quite a, a nice size. I use them a lot in my tutorials and the same with your circles as well, but this is your one inch, okay? You need to cut 18 one inch squares which I've done here and then what I went ahead and done is I stuck them all on top of some brown fun foam. I get my fun foam from the range, you can buy a pack of it, it's usually in the children's art department. This is one that I haven't finished yet so that is, there's the one inch square, I've then stuck it onto this foam and then I'll cut it out and the reason I've stuck it on the foam is to give it dimension. If you don't have any fun foam then you can just use some foam pads, some sticky foam pads, but make sure you don't go maybe too close to the edge or if you do just colour the sides brown so you don't see them because you don't really want to see anything white on this. So you can see the fun foam on the side there but it just, you know, you wouldn't know it's fun foam. But it's just a quick way to add dimension rather than die cutting, you know, lots of these which you can do if you don't have any foam or any foam adhesive. I would say die cut those squares you know, do the 18 and then do that again and maybe again, so you'll need a fair fair amount of them, but if you've got a punch then that's pretty quick to do. But you will need those. Now also if you do want to personalise it, so I've got the letter T there, I've used these here, it's the alphabet and letters, it's first edition, and um, sorry, alphabet and numbers, they are tiny. It's a handy one to have because it's not something I use a lot, but there's always that one time when you need to be able to personalise something very, very small. And this is, you know, they come in very handy for this project. So you can die cut, you can cut these on your digital machines, of course. But I think when it goes so small, I think even the machines maybe sh might struggle a little bit. I just sat there and just quickly die cut them. It didn't take me no time at all. And then for the stamp there, because a lot of you have been asking about this stamp set because I've used this one, like I said, for the wash bag 
bag and even the one I used on my little drinks caddy as well you like that one and this is by Paper Mania pretty sure it was Paper Mania I've got the link in my other tutorial so I will link it in but it's a really nice one you can see there there was the top chap one that I used on the drinks caddy that was the one actually wasn't it yeah it was and then yeah that was the one on the wash bag so I've used it a lot for this series okay so I've gone through everything so now let's just go through some quick scoring so like I said it is straightforward to do so you need a piece of cardstock that's nine and three quarters by nine and a half and along the nine and three quarter side you want to score at three quarters of an inch four and five eighths of an inch five and three eighths of an inch and nine and a quarter okay and then rotate and along the nine and a half inch side again you want to score it three quarters of an inch eight and a quarter and nine okay so that's all the scoring that's needed next you want to fold and burnish all of your score lines okay and also if anybody's wondering because I do get it asked a lot this is the papers that I'm using or the cardstock so it's the 80 sheets of the Dovecraft premium textured cardstock and I'm using the brown here at the very end and the nice thing about this one is you get four of each color okay so now we want to do some cutting so you will have your do this the easiest way so you'll have these score lines at the top and you've got one that's a little bit of a smaller section because you've got a three quarters of an inch three quarters of an inch and then a half this half inch is the little tab that we fold in so this is going to be the top of our gift box so what you want to do is along the bottom here is we're going to cut the middle two score lines and you just want to cut straight up to the first score line there and just cut a wedge off of both sides of that middle section because that is going to act as a tab okay and then with this one at this end you just want to cut up and again take a few little wedges like so so if I just lay that flat you'll see what we've got there okay then with this edge here you'll just have a square in the corner we're going to remove that square completely like so then come up along this side now and you want to cut in this section here okay and you're going to remove all of that section there so right from the top so you're removing a little square and a rectangle just get rid of that there we go and then with this piece here you want to take a little wedge off because that's going to be our tab make sure you're cutting the right side you want to be cutting the tab which is the half an inch okay not the side that's three quarters of an inch that is the side of your actual box because what's going to happen is now if I wrap this around so there's one side there's the other side this is the tab that's going to stick inside there okay and then these two sides will go down and then you've got your base like so all right so just make sure that you cut your wedges out of the half inch piece and not the three quarters of an inch piece okay so that's where I just cut so now you want to come around to this top piece here and all of this section here so you want to cut up there okay so this piece and this piece you're now going to cut that completely away okay and then the small little rectangles so just cut down to the first score line so these little rectangles here you want to remove completely okay and then you want to cut down those now to that next score line okay and then very carefully don't take a lot but you just want to take a little wedge off the reason I say don't take a lot is because this piece here is what's going to wedge in to, to form your close your closure and if you cut away they actually end up wedging against or kind of locking in against these little tabs and if you cut too much away your lid will just pop open so again on this piece you just want to cut just a little bit off not a lot okay so now I'm just going to lie that down and this is what you should have so you'll have your lid here and two tabs you should then have your three quarters of an inch part again your three quarters of an inch part here and then your half inch tab here and then your base should look like that okay I'll hold that there you can pause the video if you want so you can catch up and make sure yours looks like this next we just need to now stick it together so first of all you want to stick your 
tab. So this again is that half inch tab. So I'm just going to bring in my glue and just cover that. You can use double sided tape, it's entirely up to you. And then I'm just going to turn it around this way, it's a bit easier. If you fold that down and bring this all over, it will lie completely flat. So you want to fold it over so you've got the one of the three quarter tabs and the whole front of the box. And you'll see there, you've got the same on the other side. So that half an inch tab now is inside there, all stuck down, but you should have three quarters of an inch tab and the back, and a three quarters of an inch tab and the front. And just make sure that's really nicely stuck down. Okay, and bring it all up. And now you want to, so this is the front, okay? So the same as whatever the top piece is here for the front, you want that to be the same piece that you lay down last for the base. It just, I, it's just me being funny, but I think it looks neater. And again, I, you don't have to, lots of people do the tabs first, but I actually like to do the other side first, like so. Add a little bit of glue there and there, then fold the tabs in. And that way they're concealed within these two pieces. And it's, you wouldn't see it so much with this, but if you were to look inside, you'd just see a nice finish rather than the tabs. So I've always done it that way, if I remember. And then add glue all to that piece and just stick that one down. Just make sure it's all obviously nice and straight. And then if you can't get in there, because obviously it's quite narrow, just bring in your ruler something long that you can just go in there and just make sure that's all stuck down. Okay and then all you do now is those bits go in and this is what I mean by locking in. If you cut too much off your tabs this this tab here needs something to kind of grip onto so now it can just slot in there and you want it to be quite snug because the last thing like I said you want is your lid popping open so that's nice and snug in there. It's easy for something someone to open but it's not going to pop out Okay, and there is your box. So it's really, really easy. I also have that popping, sliding pop box, I think it was, that I'd done for, I think that was a Father's Day one for, um, yeah, I'd done the Father's Day theme for a magazine, but I'd done it for Valentine's Day, that's right, and you can fit a chocolate bar. Now that one does have the measurements for that specific chocolate bar, so you could easily do that design, but in this brown card and in the chocolate bar style, and I'll link that one up here, because I think that would be a good one to, to do this with. Okay, so remember your lids at the top, and now you just want to come in and stick all these down. Now what I would say first of all, is get all your corners in place. Stick them all, you want to come in about a quarter of an inch on from the, each side and from the bottom. That's where I kind of, if I bring this one in here, you can see, how it looks. But I stick them down first, then stick in the middle one. And you should have a nice, you just want to make sure that the gap in between them is the same, and then do the same with that one. Okay, and then start coming down the sides. So just kind of place them all roughly where you, you need them to be, and get them all in position, and then stick each one down. You don't want to start from the bottom and just work your way up because the likelihood is you're going to end up either having too much space or not enough space. Whereas if you do it this way first and just kind of place them, you'll get a much nicer kind of consistent placing of all those squares. All right, like so. And again, if you use the liquid glue, it's easy to kind of wiggle them around a little bit to get them into place. So I'm going to stick them all down. If you want to personalise them and things like that, get all that stuck down because that's it pretty much now. It's just the decoration and then obviously filling it and just wrapping it up. So I'm going to stick all these down. Okay, so there are all my kind of chocolate pieces stuck down. I've got a little bit of glue there, but that's going to disappear in a minute because next I'm going to distress it. So although it's the same cardstock I've used, you'll see this is much darker and it's got a bit of a shine to it. And again, my dad likes dark chocolate, so I've tried to make it look a bit more darker because I didn't have a deep brown cardstock. I had this slightly lighter shade. And um, I've just got a little, oh, a little brown ink cube there and I'm just going to bring in one of the blending brushes there and I'm just going to use 
this post-it note paper here and basically just load up the brush and start coming in and just distressing it and it comes up really nice. Now I'm not going to be decorating this with I'm not, well, I'm not going to personalise it yet because this is a spare, so I don't know who will end up having this. It will go into my little kind of box of, of spares because I usually always make two of everything with the first one always kind of going to someone because I always try to make stuff that I actually need or, you know, want to have in my craft room and stuff. So, yeah, just kind of distress it how you want, really. This is optional, you don't have to, but I do think it does give it a bit more depth. There you go. Still got a little bit there, but do you know what? It kind of all adds to it because it's, it's a chocolate bar. You get little markings and stuff on things like that. And by the time that does get decorated, and I think it just needs to dry a bit more, but that's it. That's all there is to it for your kind of bases for this. And then, you know, from here, you can, uh, yeah, go to town with it. It'd look nice with a white chocolate as well. I think that would look really, really cool. But yeah, that's everything done. So that is my very easy and very quick chocolate bar gift box. But I think it's one of those things that you need to add to because once you add that little kind of personalization to it and you add your tag and all these bits and now it's filled as well, it's got a nice weight to it. It does make a really, really lovely gift. So I'm super pleased with this and uh, yeah, I keep finding little bits of chocolate. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial today. As always, please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.